Hello Facebook Ads people, I'm Kostadinos and this is the Facebook Ads Breaking News Podcast. Hello guys, this is Podcast 90. We are one week away from Black Friday and uh, we do have um, today to discuss about uh, some things in EU about using uh, the Meta uh, platform for free or not uh, that we're going to discuss. Uh, one idea that I have um, about working with multiple countries, something which I'm going to test uh, and you know that in this podcast I'm first running my ideas through, um, through you. Uh, the other one is an idea that I had recently with, um, with someone uh, that I'm working with, with a call center. Uh, and I will explain to you a little bit about my thought process on that so that you can understand how you can adapt to different, to different situations about different things and run ads for different situations. Uh, a little bit talking about the results and we have uh, 1, 2, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and a big question from Liar for the end, as always. Uh, not so big this time, just more around. So, results so far. Results so far, so far has been good uh, on my end. I'm really happy with the other accounts that I have. Uh, just to give you an idea, maybe from the 40 accounts that I manage, maybe I have three or four problematic accounts, uh, which if you're a freelancer, you know that uh, they're pretty enough uh, to cause you to lose your peace of mind, but uh, still uh, only only just some accounts are not working right now, so uh, I'm doing really well. Uh, I'm really happy with the results. Uh, in the inner circle, I get some messages that uh, some people are struggling, but I'm, I'm not seeing that except from some uh, smaller ad accounts. The bigger ones, Black Friday ads have started. In most cases, we start the, in all of the other brands on Monday. Um, so it's doing pretty well, at least for me. And uh, the thing that I have noticed also is that in, in some accounts, I do see people, um, I do see ROAS being higher even without the Black Friday promo starting, uh, which is really encouraging for the results that are going to come during Black Friday. Now, I'm going to show you this print screen. It says, want to subscribe or continue using our products free or uh, free of charge with ads. So basically, these are new regulations. We have seen an email in EU about uh, being able to uh, not seeing ads within the platform uh, if you pay. Uh, they have lowered the price. It was higher. This is coming from uh, my, my personal uh, mobile phone, um, I think laptop, uh, that they asked me if I want to start using it and uh, have no... Uh, uh, use free uh, of charge with ads or uh, pay so that I will not see ads. Of course, I said free uh, because that's my job and that's how I'm, uh, I, I live. Uh, but uh, some people might want to pay for that. I doubt that many people will have to pay, but EU is forcing Meta to actually give the option to the people to if they want to be advertised or uh, not. Um, so I don't know what kind of impact is going to have. And again, all of this is for EU and the GDPR regulations and all of that. Uh, next one. Um, I'm having an idea which I ran through the inner circle. We are in the process of testing it. Um, so the news go like, go like this. First, the inner circle knows about everything. Or maybe, let's keep it like this. A friend of mine or friend of mine's in private conversation or in a coffee here in Greece with Jonathan know my first idea. Then it goes through the inner circle. Then it goes to the podcast when we see that it makes sense and I'm not saying uh, crazy stuff. And then it might become a video if we have more data, uh, like the rapid fire, for example, okay? So a lot of times you hear me saying that uh, you can take the different countries and uh, you have to do different clusters. For example, one cluster, which is very typical that we use all the time, is Germany, Austria, Switzerland. So what I have realized, though, and what I have seen by just saying, OK, let me break down the results. I'm seeing 80 percent of the sales coming from Germany. So let me run now only Germany in order for me to be able to have better results. What I have seen over there is this, that while I do have 
only Germany. The results are not so good as they are when I'm running Germany, Austria, Switzerland. The explanation that I gave to that is because of the fact that I do believe that Germany is taking the majority of the budget, but the one sale which is coming from Austria, Switzerland, they just one sale which is coming from there. Maybe it's helping on average there was on actually having better results. So what I have um, thought with my friends and on my own and what I'm going to do is this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a cluster of, let's say, 12 countries, uh, 20 countries, doesn't matter. In this cluster inside, we're not going to add United States because always United States is going to win and actually spend a lot. But we're going to add any, any, any other country that you want except from United States. What is going to happen is that we're going to go there. We are going to see which country is actually becoming really good and is taking sales. And if the results are also good, not just taking sales with very bad results. But if the results are good, what we're going to do is that we are going to just see how much this country is actually spending. We are going to cut the spend to whatever it's spending on the previous seven days. We're going to divide it by seven to see how much spending every day. And then we're going to remove all the other countries. Is it going to reset the campaign? Yes. Is it something that worth testing? Yes, it's a nice idea. Maybe it's going to work. Because I was thinking and I was trying to reverse engineering the thing that if I'm using Germany, Austria, Switzerland, why it's not working when I'm using only Germany after that? And the reason is that maybe because I'm just liberating some budget, it's not able to scale that much. Maybe it doesn't want to. So the solution would be to just try to isolate, isolate this country by just leaving it spent how much spending uh, already there. Of course, maybe this is just, but this is just speculation and this is my life to see, you know, I'm just having these ideas, I'm testing them all the time and I'm seeing if they're going to work. So the thing is that you're going to do this, you're going to put all these countries, when you see one of them getting some really good spend with good draws over there, then you're going to remove all the others, start another campaign with the others to find your next campaign, lower the budget on this one. It's a speculation, it's a test that I'm going to do. Uh, if you're not lazy enough and you like Facebook ads in the way that I do, maybe this is something interesting that you can test on your own and see if it's going to work if you're working with multiple countries. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that I'm going to test it in, uh, not now, on Black Friday, but uh, on a normal period I'm going to test it with one of my students of, of uh, Chosen 5, Onur. Uh, most probably we're going to test it, we have already uh, discussed it because he's running ads to multiple uh, countries. And uh, he's listening to all of the podcasts, so hi Onur, I will see you tomorrow, <laughs> uh, because we meet every day. So uh, the next thing that I want to say is um, a little bit of interesting um, creative thinking outside of the box. So I have a client which is having a call center and the call center is working on specific hours during the day uh, and on Saturday, but it doesn't work on Sunday. And uh, you know, the... The thing is that you need to have the call center in order to send people to do the call and uh, they're getting paid from, from that, if it's a valid call or not. I'm not going to go into more details. So I was thinking of ideas, you know, trying to think outside of the box. And this is maybe just an inspiration for you that you're listening to the podcast on, on if you have a different case or something on how you can think outside of the box, utilizing boxes that they're out there for other reasons. So... The first idea that comes to mind is that, okay, don't run daily budgets, run lifetime budget so that you can do specific hours of uh, the day that uh, you can actually uh, spend. Um, but I was thinking, how can I do it in a more creative way? So the first thought that came to my mind, it was that, what if I do daily budgets, but I do uh, budget scheduling inside? So I'm doing daily budgets and I'm doing for the next uh, 50 days, I'm just doing budget scheduling of spending 800% more. This is, the, this is the limit. So if you're spending, let's say, 20, you can spend 800% more. It doesn't let you to spend more than 800% during the hours that they are the peak hours for the call center. And then it goes back to 20. On Sunday, it's just going to spend 20, nothing else, okay? So you're losing some money, which is the, this $20 during the other hours of the day, but you are spending 800% more during the call center hours. So this is a very good creative way of thinking. You can do it on a CBO, you can do it on an, on an ABO. I'm doing it on a CBO and I'm using a different uh, creative inside uh, 
um, inside uh, the same ad sets which are having the same. So it's uh, basically uh, same ad set targeting because I have seen that this targeting is working with different creatives, just one creative in each one of them so that I can let my creatives to compete with each other and just let them spend doing that. So I, I thought that this was a creative way of doing it. Now, the other way that I thought of it, just so that you can understand that even if you have some difficulties with your ads, there are always ways that you can just be a little bit smart using all of these different buttons and options that Meta is actually giving us. The other option that I thought is that, what if I play with cost caps? So I'm having a cost cap. I'm just uh, doing it during the hours that the call center is not live. I'm just doing it to $5. Uh, while I'm getting $20 cost per purchase, for example, not purchase, cost per, uh, cost per call. So I'm going to increase it during these hours, the cost, uh, the cost cap, I'm going to increase it or the bid. I'm going to increase it on uh, 20, 25, and I'm going to lower it to 5. And I'm going to put a big budget, like 500, okay? So as long as you're giving me 25, and I'm going to just play with this cost cap um, every day, uh, two or three times per day or depending on the results that I'm getting. So this is another way for me to control it. While the call center is closed, it's not going to spend and the campaign is not going to just turn on and off. It's just a campaign that doesn't spend. Uh, I'm keeping my campaign live while I'm uh, making it work only on the hours that make sense. So I was. Uh, this is the thoughts that I had and I thought that it would be interesting sharing with you because maybe if you're a freelancer or someone who has a specific case maybe this is going to inspire you and maybe you will take a little bit of this and that that I said and you will make your own strategy for something else. That's all. I hope that this is going to be valuable for anyone of you. If it's valuable for anyone, uh, let me know about the case. I, I would be really interested of how you used uh, this uh, information. Uh, let's go to your questions guys uh, as fast as we can so that we can do all of them. Um, uh, okay, thank you. In these cases uh, of uh, lower daily budget, does it make sense to run a campaign optimizing for leads if you have a way to qualify those leads and having a second retargeting campaign on those leads optimizing for purchases? So let me be clear on something. Whoever is proposing that you should do lead generation or you should do um, awareness campaigns or engagement campaigns and then or traffic campaigns and then retarget um, without a very specific reason. So it has to be a very specific reason. Um, I think that they are clueless and they, 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 they should not be talking about Facebook ads, okay? Because there are a lot of people that, even famous people, that they're saying that you should run awareness or traffic ads and they retarget, okay? So, we wouldn't ask for an email. We would ask a question to qualify and require specific behavior on our website. Overall, it would uh, be just a workaround to facilitate the algorithm learning. Is it something we already saw as a strategy? Do you have a suggestion about this? My suggestion is that you should go for purchases since day one and that you should not be focusing to lead generation or traffic ads at all because this is the best way to train your algorithm. There are specific cases, again, on Facebook, we never say that this is not going to work anywhere. It can work in some cases. For example, you might be getting uh, lead gen for something really expensive like, um, I have something in my mind but I cannot say it. Um, I don't know what to say. There are some things that are very delicate, okay? Let's say someone has a small penis, okay? And for guys, this is reality. There are people that they have a small penis, okay? Uh, the thing is that this is a very sensitive information. Maybe they need to fill a form so that they can feel more uh, okay with it. They're not going to just click and buy pe penis enlargement, for example, immediately. Sorry for, sorry for the example, but I'm just trying to make it tragic so that you can understand. So they're not going to buy just like this. Maybe they need a warm up through a funnel and a way of actually learning more and all of that. Maybe they will become a lead. You will call them and stuff and maybe later you're going to convert them. Okay, so we don't say no. But we do say that there are specific uh, cases and uh, no, it's not all of them about <laughs> penis enlargement but you get my point okay let's move on let's move on uh, I just recently discovered your channel and I say it's amazing yeah it's the only channel that's talking about penis uh, enlargement actually yeah it is amazing the content you provide is super careful and I really appreciate uh, guys I'm stuck now I'm going to say I hope it's not helpful because you have a small penis uh, okay but I have to actually decompress and actually 
be serious about the podcast. So let's take it. The content you provide is super helpful and really appreciate all the value you share. I'm currently running a general store for dropshipping, but uh, I've been wondering uh, if general stores still perform well compared to niche stores these days. Uh, what's your take on this? Would you would love to hear your insights? Uh, I'm not uh, on a high budget. My scaling hasn't been uh, higher than 200 a day. That's decent for a beginner. Uh, thank you so much for everything you do and keep up the great work. Thank you so much for the nice words. Uh, I must say that uh, to be honest with you, we don't criticize if something is um, good or bad by the niche or stuff. If the product is working, it's going to work. So I have seen general niches working. I have seen smaller niches working. Um, now, if you ask me if you will go to the pet niche like every other dropshipper, I will tell you find something more creative instead of going to the pet niche like everyone does. Even if you go to the pet niche, if your product is good, you're going to kill all of them, you know? So everything can work everywhere. It really depends on the product. And uh, it's not about if it's a general niche or a niche product and stuff. Now, is it easier to train your pixel in, uh, in a niche uh, store comparing to a general store? Yes, of course it is. Uh, and it's it's better. Is it scaling as much as the general store? No, it's not scaling. So you have pros and cons. If you go for the short term, maybe you should go in a new store and try to find a way there. A con, quick question. I'm currently testing with ABO, new creatives and the budget uh, 75 per day uh, ad set. So my average cost per result purchase is 9.1. Should I kill a new test after 2030 if it doesn't perform or due to a bigger budget I should expect the first day uh, to seem like not that good as it's spending the budget to try to figure it out. So because we have the boost from Meta in the first 24-48 hours and it's trying to give us good results so that the optimization can begin. So basically what's happening is that Meta says, okay, you want purchases, take these low hanging fruits that I know that they're going to convert so that you can start your optimization process. You shouldn't be having bad results if something uh, it's good. Sometimes you might have delayed reporting. This is another thing. But having bad results and just saying that uh, Meta is trying to figure it out, uh, it's not an option with Meta and not something that is happening. If you see now a lot of checkouts, maybe you should wait to see what's going to happen. But with your cost per purchase of 30 and having 9 cost per purchase, I don't think that this is a crazy budget that you can decide if you can close something or not. I would wait 48 hours. Um, I'm kind I'm kind of answering myself here, but I don't have the experience to tell if 30 or 40 are enough, even the first day if my average is 9.1. I think that nothing is, is enough in the first 24 hours. You need to wait at least 20, uh, 48 hours in order to understand completely uh, what is happening. And uh, to be honest with you, your budgets are also small, um, but 24 hours is not a lot, okay? So you have to be careful with that. Next one. Uh, I would go for 48 hours. Hi, is learning limited a big deal? Is it absolutely necessary to increase the budget to increase at C50 sales? No. For me, learning limited and learning phase is uh, something uh, which is which Meta is doing in order for you to spend more money. I do believe that they do it in purpose and um, I do believe that the only reason that they do it is so that you can spend more money. Uh, I have seen uh, assets going out of the learning phase and assets not going out of the learning phase and it has no difference to me. I have seen assets go going out of the learning phase and not having better results or staying for a longer period or being more resilient or whatever. Um, so to me, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm not even looking at it. And also, I need to say that if you are um, spending a small amount of money, you shouldn't be even bothered with, with this because you are not going to uh, pass the learning phase. Especially if you have higher um, AOV and cost per purchase, you're not going to pass the learning phase. So don't bother with it and just don't look at it. It's another way for Meta to push you to spend more money. Is it possible that your account may collapse during Black Friday scaling if the budget was lowered in October? To be honest with you, Alexander, Alexandra, I have never seen this happening. But again, it's Facebook and I don't exclude, uh, I don't exclude the possibility. But it would, be, it would be something that would really shock me to have a normal account which is working well, not an account that worked only for one month, okay? Another account which is working well for a year. And um, then, because you lowered your budget on October, it's collapsing during Black Friday. You're having bad results during Black Friday when you try to scale. 
uh, because by lowering your budget, your ROAS should have improved. So I don't see how this is a possibility, especially during Black Friday. But again, I'm not excluding the possibility. Uh, maybe if it's happening to you, you have to research if, you're, if you have done anything to the website and stuff. Because it looks like it should have been influenced by something else. Thanks again, I currently have a profitable 600-day broad CBO promoting three of my best-selling items from my women's clothing brand. I also have three new arrivals that I want to test. If I create a new 300 per day broad CBO for these new arrivals, will it split for sales between the two campaigns? Most likely no. Uh, it really depends on how people are going to see it. Are you going to target different people, different target groups with these new creatives? Or they are so similar to the, your best sellings that they are just going to target the same people? This is what is going to define it. I watch your daily loop video and notice low performance when adding another campaign before, but I'm not sure uh, I was observing it correctly. I uh, would love your advice. Thanks. It really depends. Whenever you are adding more budget, you are admitting the fact that you are taking a risk and you might have cannibalization. So the reason that I'm posting the daily loop is not so that you are going to be afraid of and not doing it. It's because I want you to know what is happening when you see that your ROAs are dropping and uh, all of that while you are spending more. But the, but the way that you are doing it is correct. You do another campaign with other creatives, you are not abusing the same creatives. So this is, this is something that they would have done also to test. But if it doesn't work, then you go back to your normal spend and everything is okay. Hello again. Uh, hope you're doing well. I have so many questions, but I will do one. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, one, two new creatives uh, for a product you advertise, how would you use them? Okay. Inside an existing campaign with a new ad set or inside an ad set as a new creative or making a new campaign. So. You know that in this channel we don't like to toss creatives inside a working campaign, but there are some exclusions as always. So what's the exclusion? Exclusion. Basically, uh, by the way, let me finish his question. Uh, we'll try to catch more clicks per uh, plus conversions in general. How do you handle new creatives? Thanks again about your interesting content. Keep doing it. So let's analyze a little bit of how we were, we were going to do it. Basically, what we were going to do is that we were going to toss uh, the new creatives inside uh, an uh, Advantage Plus campaign uh, or um, a CBO campaign, but we're not going to toss them with a new ad set. Uh, you can toss them either to... Basically, you have a lot of options, let me tell you. So, in an Advanced Shopping campaign, if we're talking about the same concept, because you have created already a Hot Pocket, so basically, based on the... Um, based on your creatives, which are also targeting for you, because based on the creatives, you are actually making different people to decide if they are going to buy or not. Uh, you're forming a hot pocket. If the creatives are the same or the product, then the ugly is same, then it makes sense and you can toss them inside. Maybe they're not going to take budget, but maybe that means that they're not as good as the main one. My disagreement to that is that maybe if you can, if you have done a new campaign, maybe they would have taken their own budget. But of course, we fall under the daily loop theory over here that they might cannibalize your previous campaign because basically they just um, resonate to the same hot pockets and they are going to create similar hot pockets that each one of them is going to cannibalize the other because they're not different angles or different products. Now, the logic here says that if you, if, you, if you have done it, tried to scale and you have seen cannibalization or if you don't want to test it at all, the logic here says that you can toss them inside either on the ad level or as another uh, ad set on a CBO uh, and you can see if they're going to overrule the ones that you have which means that they're going to be better creatives. If they don't, they're going to stay like this and uh, nothing is going to uh, change for you but if they do, you know that these creatives are better and you have a risk to cannibalize. On the other hand, maybe they're going to be creatives that they can take their own budget and be successful and be on their own campaign and maybe they're not going to cannibalize. So this is how you could use it. And yes, there are chances that you can toss them inside and you can see, but don't expect them always to take budget. They have to be better from the creative that you already have. In the previous podcast, I think we analyzed a lot with the debate uh, the way that this thing is working with tossing creatives inside and waiting for one to overrule. So maybe the previous um, uh, podcast is going to help you. Next one. Hi, Constantinus. Thank you so much for your videos. I have been learning a lot. There, there are great examples with big budgets. Uh, I have very limited budgets starting um, started beginning of November 
and I've been running advanced plus catalog campaigns with some bestseller flexible ads running at 90 per day US only. I have post store with 500 plus stores, started running ads since June this year, over 1.5 rows and not profitable and just uh, over 10k in sales. My current campaign is running at 0.87 rows. I tried crazy method a week ago and the rows was at 0.95. So if you have, if you, why did you cry, try the crazy method? Will you try the crazy method with something that's working? Uh, so you had 1.87 and with crazy method you got 0.95. Crazy method is not there to improve your ROAS. Crazy method is there to make you have more sales with something that's already working. So if it was having two ROAS, you would run crazy method and you would be able to scale a little bit more. That's why you use it. My question is that, should I keep uh, this kind of campaigns running and give more time to optimize or should I shut it off and start new ones? I think you should shut them off and start new ones uh, because this is not sustainable for you. So there's nothing to wait here. It's not like you have 1.3 rows and you want to take it to 1.5, so you're just going to give it time. Here we're talking about the total disaster. I see a bit of a boost of advanced plus when I first start running and rows starts to drop after my account is at uh, one, two weeks mark. A lot of times I shut off the ads, uh, do more designs and then start catalog ads again. Uh, is this the right strategy or should I let it run hoping it eventually will optimize saying you're in advance? No, you should not let it run, especially in the beginning of another account. Um, you should be more aggressive. Uh, you started on June uh, this year. Okay, you should have some data, but still you didn't manage to make the other account profitable. Uh, so in my opinion, you have to be more aggressive and maybe with smaller budgets initially until you find some success. Okay. Um, another thing that you can do is that uh, in order for you to become profitable, maybe if you don't change the numbers of your company, you are going to focus on the creatives. There's not another way. So you run a campaign, you're having X rows, and then you're just tossing creatives inside in order for you to find a creative which is going to do better and improve your rows. That's the only possible way for you to improve rows. Um, yeah. Next one is Pascalis. Hi, Pascalis. Uh, hi, does Facebook Alcor sometimes choose spends on their own creative? If you have two videos creatives and you see Facebook spending on a creative that is getting lower ROAS, should I turn it off to help the ad set? Or with uh, time, Facebook will figure it out. Thank you, Costa. Why in these questions this week, everybody is so flexible and keen on letting the ads, you know, and being flexible while in other questions they are more aggressive and they want to close the ads faster? I don't get it. But... Still, Paschali, let me tell you that um, if something is not uh, working, waiting for you to get better and better in terms of ROAS, I think it's a wet dream. And uh, you should not be looking for it or just give all of your hopes uh, on that. Um, I think you should do another campaign and try something else if you don't see it uh, working. Uh, also, why is it focusing on the bad creative? Facebook doesn't know that it's a bad creative. So... Facebook is trying to, to understand if it's a good creative or not. So we do trust the algorithm, but we are there to intervene when we have to. So what's happening is that sometimes we might see that Facebook is focusing on one ad. It has its own reasons. It doesn't matter, like it's getting good engagement or whatever, or good clicks. But if it doesn't give us the result that we want, then we close it because Facebook is going to keep spending on that because Facebook is not doing it for, for any bad reason or whatever. Uh, it believes that it's going to do that. If we don't want to give it more chance, we just close it. We do the optimization that we have to do so that we can guide it uh, better. I'm not one of the people that I do believe that we should let them do, we should let do the algorithm whatever it wants. I'm just there to intervene and guide it by closing access that I don't want to keep. Okay, that's what I do. Uh, or, for example, if it's a new pixel and stuff, I try to guide it with uh, interest targeting. But if it's a trained pixel, I'm going to do broad targeting and let it figure it out. Uh, but if I see that one ad set there is taking budget, and most of the times, let me tell you that the ad sets, uh, not the ad sets, the creatives that are taking budgets and they don't work, if you put them on another campaign, another campaign, another campaign, they're going to have the same behavior. So there is a reason that they're taking budget and they're not working. Next one. Hey bro, uh, so here is the thing. What's the thing? For my ad account, only AC works. That's good. That's not bad. I have tested ABO, CBO and they don't hit. The only campaign method is AC. How can I scale AC? You can scale AC by increasing budgets because it's an ABO and it doesn't actually behave well or you can scale by doing multiple ACs with different creatives. 
Uh, can I create multiple AC campaigns with different creatives in each campaign? Yes. How would your approach be? Different concepts and different uh, products and stuff so that you're not going to fall under the daily loop theory. What is the best method to keep scaling AC? I have one campaign with four creatives, one creative is a winner. What should I do to scale uh, over the roof? That's a red flag that you said over there at the end. Uh, you cannot scale with one creative over the roof. You have to work with more, 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 more creatives in order for you to scale more. Uh, you can always try to scale as much as you can with your own risk of uh, collapsing the ad account. Uh, but if you want to stay scale sustainably and all of that, then what you should do is that you should scale with multiple uh, different creatives on campaigns. Uh, or you can just keep start increasing the budget to start finding the point up to what you can actually uh, scale. But the fact that AC is working for you is a good thing because AC campaigns are more uh, flexible actually. So next one, uh, if you use catalog ads in your AC campaigns, uh, are you using the carousel or the collection ad format? You can use both. Carousel is having more engagement because people play with the back and forth thing. Um, don't forget that if you use catalog ads with your normal creatives, basically the problem is that the catalog ads are going to take all of the budget. So just do one campaign just for your catalog ads. Okay, and as we said, now on Black Friday, you can use frames so that you can convert your catalog ads into Black Friday catalog ads. It's going to help you a lot to have another extra campaign that you can scale during that period. What format works better for you? Catalogs. Uh, a little, they're a little bit better. And what is the maximum number of ads would, would you recommend on a daily budget of 140 euros? You're doing a catalog, you're having one ad. Um, you mean maximum number on ASC? Okay, you can do between... You can do between 10 and 20, I would mostly like with this budget between 5 and 10 but it doesn't matter how many you add because at the end of the day it's a dominant ad campaign the AC and it's going to focus in one or two or three and then you can duplicate the campaign and run the rest uh, to see if they're going to also hit so I wouldn't care as much as I care on how many ads I put inside the ads that's on a CBO which I put three to five maximum over here you can put more and Meta is going to decide the best one, which is going to become the dominant. And if you, if, if this is working, then you can duplicate and do another campaign with the rest. So you have this flexibility over here. So I wouldn't limit you. Even if you want to do 30, do 30. They're not going to take budget anyway, and you will have to duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. But even if you put 10, not all of them are going to take budget because it's dominant. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, guys, that's all. Uh, this podcast uh, has reached its end. We did much better time management for this one. And uh, I will see you on the next one, which is going to be uh, just uh, on the weekend on, of uh, Black Friday. So I wish you all good Black Friday. I hope that you're going to make and have very good results. And uh, we're going to talk then. This is the end of the first part of the Facebook Ads Breaking News podcast. If you don't want to miss the second half of the podcast, where I'm answering all the remaining questions of the week, visit my Patreon page following the link on the description. This was the Facebook Ads Breaking News Podcast. Like it or not, it is what it is.